Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis, video number 18. And in this video, we got to talk about the addition law of probability, an or logical test. Now we're on the sheet V18. And to learn how to use the addition law of probability, we're going to see one, two, three, four different situations where we can use the addition law of probability. Then we'll look at some data set examples. Now let's start this out by reminding ourselves what we learned last video. This is one of the drawings I did in the PDF notes. Now if we look at this first example, mutually exclusive events, brown hair, or black hair. For these types of events, here's the formula. And I'm showing you the formula the easy way and then the traditional statistics way. Now this first one, what's the probability of brown hair or black hair? Well, guess what? We simply add the two probabilities. If we look at the second formula that you write there, that means union. So a lot of times in statistics, they define a union as an OR logical test, and they use this notation to represent an OR logical test. Probability of brown hair, union, black hair. Well, the formula is still the same. I see I'm missing a parentheses right there, though. Add probability of brown hair to probability of black hair. Now, when we have not mutually exclusive events, remember with the Venn diagram, you can see the overlap. That overlap is the AND. That's where both conditions are true. Now in this case, we have brown hair or hazel eyes. So the formula for probability of brown hair or hazel eyes, well, we add the two probabilities, but we have to subtract the intersection, the overlap, the area where there's an AND logical test. Now here, this is the formula from the textbook. And the U means union, so the probability of brown hair union hazel eyes. Well, we add the two probabilities, and then we have to subtract the and logical test between the two events. But notice the symbol. That symbol means intersection. All right, now let's jump over to our examples. Now we'll see four examples of calculating the probability for an OR logical test from a data set, from a frequency distribution, from a cross-tab report, and from predetermined probabilities. All right, number one, from a data set for visitors to Seattle. And in this survey, they asked, did the visitor visit the Space Needle? And then a second question, did the visitor visit Pike's Place Market? Now, this is a small data set just so it's easy to create our calculations. We'll see this same data set bigger later in the video. Now let's first count from this column the number of yeses. That'll be the count for Space Needle. So we'll use count ifs, criteria range. There's the column for Space Needle, comma, criteria, it's yes. When I hit Enter, I get 5. Now from this column, let's count Pike's Place equals count ifs, criteria range, that's all the items we want to potentially count, comma, and criteria, there's the yes. When I hit Enter, I get 7. Now let's count how many visited both sites. That means we use count ifs on one, two different columns, and we use two criteria. Anytime you use count ifs with more than one criteria, you're running an AND logical test. All right, criteria range one, there's Space Needle, comma, yes, comma, criteria range two, there's Pike's Place, and criteria two, yes, and Enter. Well, so four people went to both. We can see the first visitor, yes, yes, they went to both. The second visitor did not. Now, when you break apart the three different component calculations into separate cells, then the OR formula is easy. Equals, we get the count for the first event plus the count for the second event. And guess what? If we just leave it there, it'll double count. Remember, yes, yes from these two formulas. 
there'd be a 1 for Space Needle and a 1 for Pike's Place. But we're counting the record. So instead of 2, we need 1. That's why we have to subtract the people who went to both sites. When I hit Enter, I get 8, but that's not quite what I want. I want the probability here, F2. So in parentheses, I have to force addition and subtraction to happen before division. So we'll divide it by 10. And when I hit Enter, there's the probability that a random Seattle visitor visited the Space Needle or Pike's Place Market. Now, if we want a single cell formula and we don't have the individual calculations in the cells, then, as we learned last video, we can use the filter function. And the filter function tends to be easier than trying to string together one, two, three count ifs. Now, the array, we're going to select just one of the columns, but you can select one or more of these columns because we're going to filter based on a logical test and then count the rows. So that's array, comma. And in include, that's where we build our or logical test. Now, open parentheses, and the first logical test is, hey, the whole column for Space Needle, are any of you equal to yes? Then we close parentheses, and or logical tests are all about addition. So plus, open parentheses, Pike's Place, are you equal to yes? Close parentheses, close parentheses. Now, if I hit Enter, it will spill, and that's not what I want. But I do want to look at it, so I'm going to hit F9. And sure enough, there's the visitor numbers for visitors that went to at least one of these sites. Control-Z, and we're interested in counting rows, so we'll put rows around filter, close parentheses. And now if we enter, we get a count of 8, F2. Now we divide that by the total number of records or observations. And when we hit Enter, we get the same probability. Now let's scroll down. And our second example, we want to see from a frequency distribution with mutually exclusive categories, we want to do an OR logical test. Now here's some airline data. Arrival, early, on time, late, and canceled. And here's the frequencies. There's the total. Well, if we want to calculate the probability that a randomly selected flight is early or on time, well, they're mutually exclusive categories. So we simply add the frequency for early plus the frequency for on time, close parentheses, and divide by the total number of observations. So Enter, and we get a probability of 0.894, or 89.4%. Now, what if I wanted the probability that a randomly selected flight was canceled? Well, in our frequency distribution, there's just one item. So this is a single condition logical test. I take the frequency for canceled and divide it by the total. When I hit Enter, I get 0.025, or 2.5%. Now, what about the probability of not canceled? Well, I definitely don't want to add all of these up and divide by 1,000. I already have the event that I'm interested in, and I want everything else, so I use the complement rule. One, that represents the entire sample space. So we subtract 0 0.025, and when I hit Enter, there's the probability that a randomly selected flight was not canceled. Now let's scroll down and look at example number three. From a cross-tabulated report created from the Visitors to Seattle data set, we need to calculate the probability that a randomly selected visitor visited the Space Needle or Pike's Place. Now, because this is a cross-tabulated report with frequencies, we have all the information we need to make this OR logical test calculation. Now, Pike's Place Market is in the column area. There's no, they didn't visit. Yes, they did. Space Needle is in the row. There's no, there's yes. Now, when you have a cross-tabulated report, the counts in the margins represent the frequencies for whatever items are in the row area. Down at the bottom, those are the frequencies for whatever's at the top of the column. So if we need the frequency for, yes, they went to the Space Needle, there it is. Frequency for went to Pike's Place, 
there it is. And fundamentally, everything on the inside of a cross tab, that's an AND logical test. So right there, yes, yes, that's the count for people that went to both. So over here, we'll make our formula equals, and in the numerator, we're just adding the counts. There's the people that went to Seattle, plus the people that went to Pike's Place, minus the people who went to both. Now close parentheses, and we divide that by the grand total. And when I hit Enter, of course, we get the same probability. Now here's example four, and this is when we have predetermined probabilities. And of course, this one's going to be the easiest, because they already gave us the probabilities that someone went to the Space Needle, there it is, 0.5, Pike's Place, 0.7, and the probability that they went to both. So our formula for an OR logical test that they went to one or the other, we simply add the probability for the first event to the second event, and then subtract the probability that they went to both. And when I hit Enter, we get exactly the same thing. All right, we saw four examples for an OR logical test. Sometimes you're given the probabilities. Sometimes you're given a cross tab. Sometimes you're given a data set, and notice all three situations were calculating the same number, but were given different source data. And then the other example is sometimes you're given a frequency distribution, and you need to calculate probabilities. Now let's go over to the sheet Seattle 1. Now here we have a survey. And for this data set here, we have two different columns with yeses and nos. If we go over to Seattle 2, we have the same questionnaire, but each person was given four choices. So your data comes in a single column. Now we're going to start with a pivot table. And then from the pivot table, we'll calculate our probabilities. Let's go back over to Seattle 1. We'll start with this data set first. With a single cell selected, we go up to Insert, click the Pivot Table button, or you can use your keyboard, Alt-N-V-T. We'll select Existing, and for Location, we'll say F4. Click OK. Here's our field list. We'll drag Space Needle down to Rows, and instantly we get a unique list of No and Yes. Let's change the column width, and I want to change the name here. I'm going to do it up in the Formula bar. Let's just leave Space Needle and Enter. Now we'll drag Pike's Place down to Column. Same thing here. I'm going to rename this, change the column width. Now it doesn't matter which field we drag to the values. I'm going to drag Visitor. And now we get the cross-tabulated frequencies for Space Needle, no and yes, right here. Pike's Place, no and yes, right here. There's the grand total. That's the number of records in that data set. And these are all AND logical tests. Now let's scroll over. And we want to calculate the probability that a random Seattle visitor visited the Space Needle. Equal, well, I need the yes in the margins for Space Needle. So there it is, 90, divided by number of records, and Enter. So it looks like 0.45 for Pike's Place equals we go to the margin at the bottom, find the yes, divided by 200, and Enter. We get 0.65. So the percentage of people that went to Pike's Place was higher than the Space Needle. That makes sense. It cost a lot of money to get to the top of the Space Needle. Now let's calculate the probability they went to both places equals, and we have to line up yes and yes. And there it is, 78 divided by 200 and Enter. Now we have those three probabilities. So now we simply take the single event probability, add it to the other single event probability, and subtract the AND probability. And there we go. For an OR logical test, someone went to Space Needle or Pike's Place, 71%. Now let's go over to Seattle 2. Now in this data set, the person answering the question was given four options. Only the Space Needle, only Pike's Place, both or neither. This would be no, no. This would be yes, yes. This would be yes, no. And this would be no, yes. Let's build a pivot table. Click in a single cell, Alt-N-V-T. I'm going to put in on existing in cell D8. Click OK. 
Ooh, that was dangerous. You really don't want a pivot table to touch anything. But luckily, our pivot table will only have two columns. Now our table only has one field. So we drag that down to rows. There's our unique list. I'm going to rename this something like Visited in Seattle. We'll drag the field down to Values. And there's our count or frequency. It doesn't matter. The label there was fine, but I'm going to type frequency. I'm going to scroll over. And how in the world are we going to calculate the probability of Space Needle? We don't have that here. We have only Space Needle. Well, here's how we're going to do it. In parentheses, well, these people only went to Space Needle. And we're going to add it to the count for both. Because every single person in both went to the Space Needle. So that's how we get the total that went to Space Needle. Close parentheses, and we'll divide by total records and enter. We get 0.45 or 45% equals open parentheses. And we're trying to calculate probability for Pike's Place. So there's the only plus every single person in there went to Pike's Place, so plus 78. Close parentheses and divide by the total and enter. Now, what about both? Well, they already gave it to us equals 78 divided by 200. And now when we get to, did you go to one place or the other? It's simply Space Needle plus Pike's Place minus both. And when I hit Enter, I get 71%. All right, in this video, we looked at two different possible data sets from a survey. And we calculated a number of different probabilities, including the OR and the AND. Here was our other data set. And then we started it out here looking at one, two, three, four different situations when you're using the addition law of probability, really an OR logical test probability. All right, next video, we have an exciting topic. We'll talk about conditional probability. All right, we'll see you next video. Thank <music> you.